Looks like I'm seeing you the second time uh, this new year. Aren't you special? Praise the Lord. All the same, I'm going through you now to the rest of the church all over the world. I'm saying once again, Happy New Year. And this year will be happy for you. Yeah. Prosperous for you. Yeah. There's coming a promotion this year. Yeah. I, receive. I, receive. I receive. I receive. Let me hear I receive from. I receive. You've got to eat in Jesus' name. Yeah. All those things you've been running after and chasing after and almost getting it is gone. This year you'll grab it. Yeah. Because it's going to be a year of miracle. The best year you ever lived since so upon. Give me a good, good amen. We're going to pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you at this time. We bless your name for your people. We pray double blessing. Double miracle. Double anointing. Double impartation. In every life, in Jesus' name, wipe the tears away. Take the sorrow away. And all the concerns we have this year, Lord, bring a divine solution in Jesus' name. Give the best to your people. Every child, every boy, every girl, every father, every mother, every adult, every believer. Oh, Lord, I pray we'll receive the best this year from you in Jesus' name. And help us to be our best in the kingdom of God. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. I need a double amen. You are blessed. You can sit down. We're looking at Malachi chapter 1. We're doing something we have probably uh, not done before. Because... It's a new year, it's a new approach, it's a new life, and everything is turning around in your life in Jesus' name. I'm going to look at Malachi chapter 1 today. We're going to try and cover the whole chapter. And this chapter talks about a God demanding something from the people of God. Because he wants to do something special for us. He calls us into a special relationship. And as we look at Malachi chapter 1, I'm talking about giving God our best for his best. Giving God our best for his best. If we're going to have the best from God, he requires too that we will reciprocate. That he is, will do what we expect him to do. He loves us. He wants us to love him. He wants to bless us. He wants us to be a blessing unto his holy name as well. He wants to give the best to us. And he wants us to give our very best. Giving God our best for his best. As I told you, we're looking at Malachi. Look at Malachi chapter 1. And I'm reading from verse 1. It says, The body of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. Stop there for a moment. As you look at Malachi, you know, it's the last book of the Old Testament. And our message today is coming from the first chapter of the last of the last term um, of the last book. And as you look at this book, I'm choosing this book because uh, there's something here. Number one, it's a covenant book. It's a covenant book. And at this day of our covenant month, it's good to go to this book and see. How can you have the best in this covenant month? How can you have the best in this covenant year? How can you have the best at this beginning of the rest of your life? It is a covenant book. Look at chapter 2. In chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 5. It says, my covenant was with him of life and peace. My covenant was with him of life and peace. I want you to look at verse uh, chapter one, chapter 3 and verse uh, 1. Chapter 3, verse 1. It says, behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple. I said, the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant. So, as you look at this book, it's a covenant book. Not only that, number two, it is a connecting book. 
as he look at malachi he's looking to the past and then he's looking to the future and he's standing like he holds the past and then he looks at the future because it's a connecting book and this year this is a connecting month for you yeah. you will connect with god you will connect with power you connect with his provision that's why we're coming to this one a covenant book and two a connecting book look at chapter four i mean in verses five and six it says behold i will send unto you elijah the prophet before the coming and of the great day and the dreadful day of the lord and he shall turn the heart of the fathers unto the children and the heart of the children to their fathers lest i smite let i come and smite the earth the world with a cause is looking forward but look at verse 4 remember ye the law of moses my servant as it looks to the past it looks to the future and it says it is a connecting book and that's why we're looking at this because this year there'll be a connection in your life yeah. connection with god connection with power connection with the promises of god and connection with all the goodness of god in your life in jesus name yeah. a covenant book a connecting book it's a consoling book all the sorrows of the past will go away all the poverty of the past will go away there's consolation this year there is comfort this year look at the middle part of chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 10 it says prove me now here we if says the lord if i will not open the windows of heaven and then pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it it's telling us that this year consolation has come it will wipe your tears away and it will take all your sorrows and all the need of your life solution has come in jesus name well a covenant book and then a connection book and then a consoling book and let's look at them one by one now in chapter one chapter one talks about the burden of entreaty the burden of entreaty here the prophet has a body it says israel is loved by god it's a special people unto god you are a peculiar believer a peculiar child of god you are like no other child god has given you a peculiar place in the kingdom and i pray that that peculiarity you will not miss it in jesus name and as malachi saw the people of god he saw that the peculiarity was kind of a fading away they were just like all the other nations and they were asking themselves what's her privilege what's her peculiarity what's her uniqueness that's what why chapter one is dealing with the burden of entreaty look at chapter one verse one it says the burden of the word of the lord to israel by malachi and then chapter two is talking about the behavior in its uh, in view of eternity uh, the malachi says you're wondering about your peculiarity that's why i have a burden for you you're wondering about your uniqueness that's why i'm having a burden for you it says can you think about your behavior in view of eternity look at chapter 2 verse 6 in chapter 2 verse 6 it says the law of truth was in his mouth iniquity was not found in his lips he walked with me in peace and equity and then he goes on to say and they did turn many away from iniquity he said that's what i appreciated in you israel that's what i appreciated in you the people of god the behavior in view of eternity he said the burden i'm having now for the children of israel is that they were kind of slowly going away from that center and from that behavior in view of eternity then it comes to chapter three he said we can reconnect again we can plug in again and we can come into the blessing in its entirety blessing in its entirety it says it's not lost yet something new is coming are you there said something new is coming look at chapter 3 in chapter 3 i'm reading here from the middle of verse 10 it says put me now here we says the lord of course if i will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing an outpouring is coming somebody there said an outpouring is coming that there shall not be room enough to receive it and i will rebuke the devourer for your sakes 
and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field says the lord of hosts and all nations shall call you blessed turn that you into me and all nations shall call me blessed say that again and all nations shall call me blessed for ye shall be a delightsome land says the lord of hosts chapter one is talking about the burden of entreaty chapter two is talking about the behavior in view of eternity chapter three is talking about the blessing in its entirety and then chapter four is talking about the beginning of the end the beginning of the end i want you to look at chapter four verses five and six behold i will send you elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And it shall turn the heart of the fathers unto the children. And the heart of the children unto the fathers. Lest I come and smite the earth with a cause. Something new is going to begin. A new provision. And a new promotion. And a new power is going to come in your life in Jesus' name. As we look at this, talking about giving our best, giving our very best for his best. The Lord wants us to have the best, but before then, he wants you to also understand. You must be born again. You are born again. You come to the Lord and you are a child of God. All the past is gone now. you face a new direction. You face a new destiny. Sins confessed and sins forsaken. And then you become a real child of God. What did you give to the Lord at that time? For him to give you the very best salvation. You give your heart. You give your life. You give your mind. You say, Jesus, I give my heart to you. Jesus, I give my heart to you. Jesus, I give my future to you. Jesus, I give my destiny to you. And because you give your heart to the Lord, then you understood you give Jesus Christ for you on the cross of Calvary you give Jesus Christ for you to be your Savior and your Lord and it is sealed in Jesus name well don't stop there if you're going to keep on getting the best from the Lord you say Lord I lay my everything on the altar again I consecrate myself I surrender myself my heart my life everything i've got i lay it on the altar it is that absolute surrender all to jesus i surrender all to him i freely give i will ever love and trust him and in his will i will always obey i surrender all i surrender all to thee my blessed savior i surrender all that's why you were sanctified he sanctified you he purified you he poured you and then your soul became totally different something new happened again i'm saved i'm sanctified he said don't go away yet there is a power power is coming upon your life somebody there said power is coming upon your life is the power of the holy ghost and it says study ye in jerusalem until ye be endured with power from on high there are many people that go through life they say i'm born again they say i'm saved they say i'm sanctified holy ghost power supernatural power the dynamite of the health everyone coming upon your soul that dynamite will come upon your soul if you have been saved so many years and been sanctified so many years and only holiness holiness but no power this year you'll have the power of god i said you'll have the power of god and then it says you tarry in jerusalem it says for ye shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem and in all judea and in samaria to the uttermost part of the earth you'll have it in jesus name and after you've had those great christian experiences you don't stop there you keep on in your family devotion your personal devotion in learning the word of god and living by the word of god you keep on giving your very best unto god and as you give your very best unto god the best will keep on coming to you every time in jesus name and so you make it a response to the lord a responsibility to the lord that you're always giving and he is always giving you're always giving and he is always giving and that's how you're going to spend this year and what a wonderful year is going to be for you in jesus name giving god our best for his best we're looking at three points number one the confirmation of passionate compassion 
for the sons of God. The confirmation of passion, he hate compassion for the sons of God. Number two, we're looking at the condemnation of polluted, contemptible sacrifices for God. The condemnation of polluted, contemptible sacrifices for God. The children of Israel at this time, they were offering things to God that were not acceptable to God. It was polluted and it was contemptible. And God said he wasn't going to receive that from them. And that is why temporarily they were not receiving the very best from God. Number three now is consecration of pure, commendable service to God. He wants us to come back again. You are coming back again. Somebody there, I can't hear you. Say you are coming back again. And you come back to giving everything you've got, your very best unto God. Come back to number one. What's number one? Tell me there. Confirmation of passionate compassion for the sons of God. We're looking at Malachi chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 1. It says, The body of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, says the Lord. Yet you say, Wherein have I, have I loved you? As have, have you loved us? It says, Was not Esau Jacob's brother? Says the Lord. Yet I loved Jacob. That's the confirmation of love for Jacob. The confirmation of love for Jacob. The confirmation of love for Jacob. He wants to confirm to you how much he loves you. He wants to confirm to you. And he says, look at the things and doing in your life. And look at from the moment before you were saved. To the moment you were saved. And to the moment you have been following the Lord until this time. The confirmation of love for Jacob. Let's look at verses 3 and 4. It says, and I hated Esau. Watch. And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage ways for the dragons of the of the wilderness. And what the Lord means here is that he had less love, limited love for Esau. Yeah, I'll explain that to you later. You see, the love God had for Esau almost looked like what are you doing to me? What are you doing for me? It looks like something limited. And because of that, it's like hatred. And you remember Jacob himself, he had, uh, you know, those two women in uh, his life. And the way he appeared and the way he loved Rebecca and the love she had for Leah was like, uh, you know, it's like you hate me. Because that's comparison. It's like when Jesus Christ said, if you're going to follow me, you will love me more than and your father and your mother and then he uses the word hatred for that it's not hatred of bitterness it's not the hatred of antagonism it's not the hatred of punishment it's the hatred of comparison that is you love jacob so much and the love you have for me is like you know it's like hatred it says in verse 4 whereas edom says we are impoverished but we will return and build the desolate places says the lord of course then he says that they shall build but I will throw down that's the meaning of the hatred there he says I'm going to judge them because they are not giving themselves to me and they are running away from me therefore I'm going to judge them and they shall call and they shall be called the border of wickedness the people against whom the Lord has indignation forever that is consideration of less love for Esau the consideration of less love for Esau. And then verse 5 tells us, And your eyes shall see. Your eyes will see something. I said your eyes will see something. You will see blessing this year. You see the glory of God this year. It says your eyes shall see. And ye shall say the Lord will be magnified from the border of Israel. The Lord will be magnified from the border of Israel. Look at that section that we're referring to as a confirmation of passionate compassion for the sons of God. How do you become a child of God? You leave the things of the world. You leave your sins. All the sins you had before because all have seen and come short of the glory of God. Then you say, I come to the Lord. I look at Calvary. I look at what he has done for me. I accept. I believe. I receive. I trust. And because I trust in Jesus Christ who died for me, then you become a child of God. As many as received him, 
to them he gave power to become the sons of god even to them that believed on his name and the lord has shown you that as you trust him like 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 jacob trusted him like jacob believed in him he was a supplanter before he was a sinner before but now he came to the lord he said lord i believe lord i believe i believe you i trust you and this place where i've rested today i didn't know it's the gate of heaven your salvation that's the gate of heaven your conversion that's the gate of heaven the moment you trusted the lord that's the gate of heaven and since that time the lord admission compassion compassion and love to jacob and since the time of that of that new birth and that salvation see the great uh, compassion the lord has had on you but remember it says that uh, in uh, second corinthians chapter chapter six second corinthians chapter six i'm reading here from verse 17 you see what we need to do and how we become the sons of god and the daughters of god and the children of god it tells us very clearly here in uh, second corinthians chapter 6 and reading from verse 17 it says wherefore come out from among them it's your repentance it's your turning away from sin it's your turning away from evil wherefore come out from among them and be you separate says the lord you don't want to be remain like Esau that sold his battery become separate you don't want to become like lord like went to sodom and gomorrah it says that you will separate yourself unto him turn away from sin and turn to the lord and touch not the unclean thing and i will receive you and ye shall be my sons and my daughters says the lord almighty and when you become sons of god like that he says jacob have i love jacob have i love that is because you turn to the lord he loves you he loved you before you responded to that love and now he continues to love you uh, we're looking at uh, deuteronomy chapter chapter seven in deuteronomy chapter seven here he tells us about this special love about this unique love and the responsibility that comes upon you as a child of god because you love the lord jacob have i love and you have i love i'm reading from verse 3 here neither shall thou make marriages for them that, that thy daughters shall thou not give unto a son and his daughter shall not thou not take to thy son now that you are born again you're special and he loves you but that love carries responsibility he says you'll not marry the people of the world you'll not be unequally yoked together with some believers for they will turn away thy son from following me that they may serve all the gods and so will uh, will the anger of the lord be kindled against you and destroy you suddenly he's saying that uh, unequal yoke will bring sudden destruction it will stop the flow of the blessing of god upon your life it will actually bring his judgment it says but uh, but it says it does shall ye deal with them ye shall destroy their altars and break down their images and cut down their groves and turn their graves and burn their their graving images a fire is just saying that you have nothing to deal with occultism you have nothing to deal with idolatry you have nothing to deal with the paths of darkness now you are born again therefore you totally reject everything that is of the world that is of darkness and for thou art a holy people unto the lord thy god and the lord thy god has chosen thee to be a special people a peculiar people a unique people a blessed people unto him above all the people that are upon the face of the earth then it says the lord did not set his love upon you and choose you because ye were more in number than any people for ye were the fewest of all people but because god loved you he loved you jesus loves me this i know for the bible tells me so and the bible has told us the truth because the lord loved you and because he will keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers as the lord brought you 
out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondage from the hand of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God. He is a faithful God. He keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him. You see that? He loves you, now you love him. You reciprocate. You see, because he has loved me, and because he has chosen me, and because he delights in me, and because he has given me a salvation, I will love him too and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. So we have the confirmation of love for Jacob. And that love, I pray, this year, you see the practical demonstration of that in your life in Jesus' name. In Ephesians chapter 5, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. If you are part of the church, I don't mean the visible church, I mean the invisible church. If you are part of the church, the ecclesia, the called out people, the people who have come out of the world and they have come to the Lord and you come part of the bride of Christ, he loves you because he loves the church and because he loves the bride. He says, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that ye might sanctify and cleanse it to the washing of water by the word that ye might present it to himself you see the goal of christ for the church the purpose of love for the church and if you're a christian you're born again you're a child of god you're saved and you're sanctified see the goal and see the purpose and say the reason why you come into the body of christ that he might present it to himself a glorious church not having sport or equal or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish it will happen in your life and then we see now the consideration of less love for Esau less love for Esau and that's why it says and Esau I hated I've told you already it's a watch of comparison where you compare the the love of a God for uh, Jacob and you compare that with the love of God for Esau it's all be thinking it's like hatred it's like he has less love for me God loves everyone he loves everyone but he loves the church more than he loves the world he loves the people of the world he gave jesus christ for everyone in the world so that whosoever will believe on the lord jesus christ he'll come into that special love if you are born again that's how you came into that special love if you are not born again you're seen in the world he loved you for god so loved the world he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life look at matthew chapter 5 and verse 45 matthew chapter 5 5, verse 45 that she may be the children of your father which is in heaven for he maketh his a son to rise on the evil and the good and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust there are things he gives to the sinners there are things he gives to the unjust but then when it comes to the just and the believers and the children of God, he now gives special blessings unto them. That the people of the world will just look like, oh, he, he has not shown us enough love. There's limited love for them. Like there was limited love for the people of uh, the world and also for Esau. I want you to look at Hebrews chapter, Hebrews chapter 12. We're reading from verse 14. Hebrews chapter 12. We're looking at verse 14 follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord let's relate this with Jacob and Esau you see yes Esau sinned yes Esau took uh, that birthright yes Esau supplanted sorry I mean uh, Jacob supplanted Esau but then he sought forgiveness he even tried to make restitution and he said uh, go and give this to Esau and uh, she pleaded with him. He so said, no, I have enough. He was still nursing the hatred. It is sad. But Jacob, Jacob did not nurse any hatred. He said, yes, I did wrong. And because I did wrong, I'm going to repent. He repented. And then you remember the wrestling of Jacob with that personality from heaven. That is with the angel of God. And then he said, let me go. And Jacob said, I will not let you go. You accept to bless me. 
he received the blessing he was saved he received the blessing he received the love of god and so god said because you have sought my face i love you and i'm going to show special love for you how about esau uh -uh. esau retained the hatred he so retained the animosity the days of the death of my father is Satan, and then i will kill jacob and then jacob ran away and when he came back about 20 years later he said go give this to my brother and he said go and tell him i'm coming with 400 people i'm going to deal with you that man did not follow peace with anybody you saw that man did not follow holiness without which no man shall see the lord that's why it says in verse 15 looking diligent Gently, lest any root of bitterness, lest, uh, lest anyone fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up, uh, says uh, uh, they trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. In the case of Esau, root of bitterness was there. That's why he couldn't experience the fullness of the love of God and the fullness of the provision of the Lord. It says in verse 16, lest there be a, any fornicator and profane person. Profane person means, uh, you know, a defiled person, a worthless person, a person that doesn't have any, any purpose and any position in the sight of God. I pray you will not be like that. A person that God will think about and say, that man, no repentance, that man, no restitution, that man, no righteousness, that man, just a useless, worthless man. Let anyone be a prophet, a prophetic person, as Esau, who for one morsel of bread sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have uh, inherited the blessing, he was, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. He really couldn't bring himself into repentance and couldn't really seek the face of the Lord and have everything he ought to have. That's why God had limited love for him. And then he was always seeking to hate Jacob, persecute Jacob revenge on jacob let me show you in obadiah i'm reading chapter one it has only one chapter actually obadiah look at this in this uh, one chapter obadiah look at verse six obadiah look at verse six it says in verse six how are the things of Esau searched out how are his hidden things sought up that is his hidden sick, uh, hatred, his hidden animosity, his hidden bitterness against his brother Jacob. It says in verse 10, For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and, for, and thou shall be cut off forever. That's the reason why no repentance. That's the reason why only bitterness, only anger, he was manifesting all the time. And Jacob was trying to make the move. Let's settle this sin. Let's forget about this thing. Yes, I did wrong, but I'm giving you all this now. All the 20 years I went away, look, I'm giving you back. He said, don't worry. I have enough, but I'm still going to take the pouch of flesh. I'm still going to take, I'm still going to revenge. That's why God said, uh, Jacob I love and Esau I hate. And then number three now is the commendation of the limitlessness of God. The commendation of the limitlessness of God. How God without limit wants to pour his blessing out. Come to Malachi chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 5. And it says, your eyes shall see. The goodness of the Lord, your eyes shall see. And the fruit of the gospel, your eyes shall see. And the benefits of the kingdom, your eyes shall see. And the answers to your prayers, your eyes shall see. And, and the joy of serving the Lord this year, your eyes shall see. Our God is unlimited. Our God is limitless. And he will do great things in our lives this year. In Jesus' name, turn to the right, you will see the blessing. Turn to the left, you'll see the blessing. And move forward, you'll see the blessing. All around you are coming from on high. The blessings of God will be upon your life in Jesus' name. Your eyes shall see. And we and ye shall say, the Lord will be magnified from the border 
of Israel. And I pray that this year will be a year of seeing the blessing upon our lives in Jesus' name. Deuteronomy chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 7. Deuteronomy chapter 11. We're looking at verse 7. In Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 7, here is what it says. It says, And your eyes have seen all the great acts of the Lord which he did. And you'll continue to see. Then in verse 21, in verse 21, it says that your days may be multiplied and the days of your children in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them. Look at this, as the days of heaven upon the earth. The days of heaven upon the earth. Those days are coming. If you believe, you'll see the glory of God. If you accept, you'll see the fulfillment of the promise. In Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. What are you doing from verse 23? Luke chapter 10. And we're looking at verse 23. And see the joy of the Lord. The rejoicing of the Lord. Because of what the Lord was going to do. And what the Lord was doing already for his own people. Luke chapter 10 and verse 23. It tells us... and. And, and he said, and he turned, and he turned him unto his disciples, and privately said, Blessed are your eyes which see the things that ye see. And for I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. He said that this year, all that your eyes will see of the goodness of God, you'll be so surprised. You see, I didn't know the Christian life is as wonderful as this. Yes, it's more wonderful than you can ever tell. Because of the limitlessness of our God. Verse 19, before we pass on, before we move on, behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and on scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall by any means make a personal hurt me. We're coming to point number two now. The condemnation of polluted, contemptible sacrifices for God. The controversy that the Lord had with the children of Israel. And uh, the controversy that the Lord has with quite a number of so-called believers. I pray that if God has this controversy with you, you resolve it completely so that this year will open up a new page for you in Jesus' name. Malachi chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 6. His son honoreth his father, and his servant his master. If I be a father, where is mine honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? Says the Lord of hosts unto you, O priest that despise my name. And ye say, Wherein have we despise thy name? Ye offer polluted bread upon mine altar. And ye say, Wherein have we polluted thee? In that ye say, The table of the Lord is contemptible. You see those two words there? On the one hand, the word polluted. That's verse 7. Wherein have we polluted thee? And on the other hand, the word contemptible. Polluted and contemptible. It says in verse 8. And if ye offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if ye offer the lame and the sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto thy governor. Will he be pleased with thee? Uh, or accept thy person, says the Lord of hosts. And look up here, what was happening here is this. They took the love of God for granted. God loves me, God loves me, this I know. God loves me, and he is a faithful God. He will keep on loving me. Whatever I do, whatever I don't do, he keeps on loving me. And God said, you're misinterpreting this law. You're misconstruing this law. He says, you're misplacing this law. You're taking me for granted. And then the priests were there and they were offering polluted sacrifice unto the Lord. And the Lord is saying, what is all this? How can you offer something like this? They said, but you love us. And where is the love? You say you love us. Allow us. Give us permission to sin. Give us permission to offer polluted things. Don't you? Give us permission to offer contemptible things. To After all, you love us. You love us. You love us. And God said, now, 
his son will honor the father the father should love the son but the son should also show affection to the father and a master will love the subject or the you know the the servant but the servant must also reciprocate and then he says the governor must love the subject and the subject too must show loyalty and obedience and responsibility in the as citizens of the community and so he said but if i am father where is my honor if I am master, where is my honor? If I am governor, where is my honor? I said, okay now, the children of Israel, the people of Judah, and those who belong to Jacob, Israel, offer this to your governor. Will they accept that for, from you? That's what the Lord was saying. He condemned, polluted, contemptible, corrupted uh, sacrifices for him. Number one, God is father he wanted them to understand that number two god is master he wanted them to know that number three god is governor as a god is father he wants affection because this is now a family and he wants relationship that's a family as god is master he wants responsibility that the, the servant to the master must show that i'm responsible I have obligation. This is what I need to do as the subject to the governor. First, the son to the father. Second, the servant to the master. And third, the subject to the governor. There must be royalty because he is governor. And there must be responsibility because he is master. And there must be relationship because he is father. You know, some people think only the New Testament address God as father. But no, the people of Israel, those uh, people belonging to Jacob, they understood that God was their father. And that's what God was reiterating and repeating unto them. I am father, I am father, and therefore I demand honor. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32, and we're reading here from verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 32, and we're reading from verse 6 to show that God is father. And if there is father, there must be the affection between the son and the father. There must be the relationship that shows that this is father. It says in chapter 32 verse 6, Do ye thus requite the Lord, O foolish people, and unwise? Is he not thy father that bought thee? And has he not made thee and established thee? Is he not thy father? Are you going to relate with him like this? Are you going to offer something like this to him that is polluted and corrupted and contemptible? Not only that, he is master. Didn't Jesus Christ emphasize that fact to his own disciples when he said that he was he and still is the Lord and master? In John chapter 13, John chapter 13, emphasizing the fact that God is master and Jesus Christ is our Lord and master. And if you say Jesus loves you, understand that he loves you to make you a child of God. There must be that good relationship and you must have that affection and love towards the Lord. And he loves you to make you his own servant, that he is master and he is Lord. Look at chapter 13, verse 13. He called me master and Lord. And you say, well, for so I am for so i am he is our master and god is our father in ephesians chapter 6 ephesians chapter 6 we're reading here from verse 6 ephesians chapter 6 verse 6 not with high service as men pleasers but as the servants of christ doing the will of god from the heart you know the demand of god and you know how you need to respond to the love of god because he is master because he's lord because he's savior because he gave everything for you said it will not be with high service he says in verse seven with good will doing a uh, doing service as to the lord and not unto men it says you do this as to the lord with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind and then you love god with all your heart love god with all your soul love god with all your mind that you may live it says in verse 8 knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth the same shall he receive of the lord whether it be he be bunch or free and ye masters 
do the same things unto them for bearing, threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven. Knowing that your master also is in heaven. And then you come now to Malachi and he says, I am a father. Yes, he is. I am your master. Yes, he is. But then he also says, his governor. He says, can you offer that to your governor? Let's look at uh, God being the governor. It tells us in Psalm 22. Psalm 22 talks about God. It talks about our Lord Jesus Christ. As you look at uh, this, uh, Psalm 22, if you start from verse 1, you begin to see uh, the prophecy concerning the cross. Concerning Calvary, concerning Christ's crucifixion, he says, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words, the words of my roaring, of my groaning, and the words of my cry? Uh, that tells you, that's the cross right there. Look at uh, verse, look at verse uh, 7. In verse 7, it says, All day that see me, let me to scorn, and they shoot out the leaf. A uh, day they shake the head, saying, He trusted on the Lord that he would be deliver him let him deliver him sin he delighted in him he's talking about a christ on the cross of calvary when those uh, people were making jest of him he says he saved others himself he cannot save let now the king of the jews come down from the cross and we will believe him look at verse 15 my strength is dried up like a potsherd and my tongue cleave it to the jaw to my jaws and thou hast brought me into the dust of death it says for dogs in verse 16 have come past me and the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me they pierce my hand they pierce my feet it's talking about christ but now come to verse 27 verse 27 and verse 28 it says all the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord, and all the kindreds of nations shall worship before thee. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he is the, tell me what's there? Is a governor among the nations. Is a governor. Three things about our God, three things about our Lord. Number one, Father. Number two is master. Number three is governor. Come back now to Malachi chapter one. And the controversy that uh, the Lord had with the children of Israel is this. It says in verse six, chapter one, his son on earth is father and his servant is master. And if I be a father and he is, where is my honor? He said, how are you honoring me? I'm your father. And every time you pray, you have been taught to pray, a father which art in heaven. And then he says, for your heavenly father knows that he have need of these things. He says, it's your father. And because it's your father, what honor are you giving unto him? And then he says, if I be a master, where is my fear? If I be a master, where is the loyalty? Where is the responsibility? And where is the obligation? And where is the obedience you are granting unto me? He says, oh, O ye priests that despise my name, and you say, Wherein have we despised your name? He says, She offer polluted bread on, upon mine altar, and you say, Wherein have we polluted thee? In that ye say, The table of the Lord is contemptible. Look at verse 8. And if ye offer the blind for the sacrifice, is it not evil? If ye offer the lame and the sick, is it not evil? Offer that now unto thy governor. Will he be pleased with thee? Offer that to your governor. Will he be pleased with thee? If I'm father, if I am master, if I am a governor, what are you offering to me? That's what he said. He was telling them that they were doing evil. Why? Because they were not giving the best to God. They expected God to give them his best. They expected God to give them great, great blessing. But on the other hand, they were not responding. They were not reciprocating. They were not reflecting that love of God. God has given us the best already. He's given us Jesus Christ. He's given us salvation. He's given us sanctification. He's given us the power of the Holy Ghost. He's given us promises. He's given us great, great things. He's even going to provide heaven for us. He says, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. He said, 
how are you then returning that favor back to God? In their own case, they were not offering the best, they were offering the worst. They were not offering the first, they were offering the leftovers. That is, they'll take care of themselves first, they'll provide for themselves first, they'll take the very best for themselves, and then the blind and the lame and the refuse and the useless, they'll offer that unto God, and God said, that's not acceptable. And you doesn't need to quote many verses of scripture to tell them it was not acceptable. He said, just simply offer that to your governor. Let's offer that to the government. Offer that to the people who are leaders over you in the world. Will they accept that? Why don't we think about the things we offer from the, from the smallest thing to the biggest thing? Is it the very best thing we offer unto the Lord our God? If you are, you know, for example, you are taking records and then you give that record uh, to the, in the house of God. Is that how you offer that? Let's say, for example, you're an accountant and then you have to do this and do that. Can you give that kind of record to the bank? Will the bank accept that? Or will they terminate your appointment? Or maybe let's say you're offering, uh, let's say worship before the Lord. You're singing unto the Lord. And the kind of singer you see, can you uh, offer that in the concerts of the world? can you offer that to all those ceremonies of the that's what the lord is saying and let's say you're offering for example teaching you want to teach the bible and you're teaching the people of god and uh, you know you didn't prepare can you offer that in the schools in the world can you offer that in the college will they accept that in your hand let's say for example you offer you're offering food in the house of god and this is you know what you are serving the people of god if you serve that in your canteen in the world will you make any sales at all that's what he's saying he said if you can not offer those things to the people of the world to those who are fathers and masters and governors how is it you think god will accept that from you is calling us to examine our service is calling us to examine our offering before the lord and he's saying that if the people of the world cannot get that from you will not accept that from you each year will not accept that from you the best and not the worst that's what we offer the, the first and not the leftover that's what we offer the clean and not the unclean not the corrupt that's what we offer the pure and not the polluted that's what we offer the costly and not the cheap that's what we offer uh, let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 15 Deuteronomy chapter 15 and look at verse 21 and see the commandment the Lord has given if you're offering anything to the Lord from the house fellowship uh, to the time uh, you know to the uh, to the uh, district and then to the group and anything you're offering to the Lord you must make sure you offer the very best you go over that thing again you polish that thing you make it the very best you're offering on to the Lord. And then let's look at chapter 15, verse 21. It says, and if that's Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 21, what we offer to the Lord, it says, and if there be any blemish therein, as as uh, if it, uh, it, is, it was lame or blind or have any ill blemish, thou shalt not sacrifice it unto the Lord thy God. You see that? Anything you are offering to the Lord, if it has any blemish at all, you cannot offer it. You must not offer it unto the Lord. It tells us um, in uh, First Samuel chapter 2. For Samuel chapter 2. That's the controversy God had with Eli. The controversy he had with the sons of Eli. What they were offering to the Lord was not the very best. And people now, they detested the, the sacrifice of the Lord just because of them. Those things had no value anymore. And those things did not have any acceptance in the presence of the Lord anymore. It says in chapter 2 verse, 15, uh, chapter, verse 17, it says, Wherefore? The sin of the young men was very great before the Lord, for men abhorred the offering of the Lord. Men abhorred, despised, detested the offering of the Lord. It wasn't special anymore. It wasn't acceptable anymore. It wasn't the very first anymore. It wasn't the very best anymore. And God said, 
he did not want that kind of sacrifice he wanted the people to show some love some respect and some honor for him we're looking at ezekiel chapter 22 ezekiel chapter 22 and i'm reading from verse 26 ezekiel chapter 22 and we're reading from verse uh, we're reading from verse 26 and those priests that were accepting that they were encouraging the people of israel to offer just anything refuse something defiled something corrupt something polluted something contemptible unto the lord the priests were not the were not a kind of demanding the very best for god they were not demanding the very first for god and they were justifying those children of israel that it was all right to offer polluted bread and polluted the corruptible and contemptible things in ezekiel chapter 22 verse reading from verse 26 a praise about lifted my law and i profane my holy things they are put no difference between the holy and the profane neither are they showed difference between the clean and the unclean and i've and i've hid their eyes from my sabbath it says uh, my sabbath that is uh, the holy day became like ordinary day but well, everything became the same and the offerings were you were polluted and they were not acceptable in the sight of the lord our princes in the midst thereof are like wolves ravening the prey and it's to shed blood and to destroy the souls to destroy souls destroy the souls of men and that's why god now said he had no pleasure in all those sufferings and sacrifices they were making all that the lord was saying is i love you why don't you show some love back and i'm blessing you why don't you bless my name i want to magnify you like i magnified uh, joshua before the children of israel why don't you magnify me and why don't you give to me the honor and the glory that is a due unto my name let's come back to malachi i'm reading here now from verse 10 malachi chapter chapter 1 we're reading from verse 10 who is there even among you that shall would that would shut the doors for naught neither do ye kindle fire on mine altar for naught there must be a purpose when you read any service before the lord you ask yourself any purpose in that any glory in that any joy in that any sacrifice in that have i have i given my best to the lord and uh, the story is uh, told of a particular man he could swim and then uh, something happened there was a boat that capsized and many people were in the water in the river and it was storming and this person will dive into the river and then he saved the first person and then he died back again and saved the second person he went on like that into the water out of the water into the water out of the water for about uh, for 17 times and then rescued 17 people and then himself he was laying on the ground uh, on the floor at the shore exhausted they took him to the hospital because he was almost passing out himself and even after he had rescued those people his mind was still on the people that were perishing in the ocean and he was saying have i done my best over and over have i done my best have i done my best and that's what malachi is saying here malachi is saying have you offered your best have you given me your best have you done the best or what you're offering to the lord is it the ordinary thing you couldn't offer to your father in the world and your father will say i'm not a beggar take your gift away take that away i don't want that or if it's a master in the world or a director in your place of work you say what what report have you given what what is this that you have time for me when did you get this take that away i don't want to see that or if it's the governor of your state or the governor in your neighborhood that will say i don't want that and god said that's the kind of thing they were offering to me it's polluted and it's contemptible and i don't want that look at this now in the middle of verse in the middle of verse 10 it says uh, i have no pleasure in you says the lord of hosts neither will i accept an offering at your hand he said your life is polluted 
your purpose you don't even have any purpose the, the purpose i can't discover the purpose of what you're giving to me you dishonor my name you dishonor my glory by the things you're offering to me it says i have no pleasure in you therefore i will not accept an offering at your hand couldn't the lord have said that to achan achan you have gone astray Achan, you have taken their accursed thing. I have no pleasure in you, and therefore I have no pleasure in your offering. If you're a robber, if you're a thief, you've gone to steal, and then you are coming to pay tithe. It says, But I don't have any pleasure in you, therefore I don't accept that offering in your hand. You disobey the word of God, you're ill treating your wife, and you are kind of, uh, you know, striking her, bashing her, or whatever, and you don't have any love in the family. It says, I don't even accept your person, and therefore I will not accept any offering in your hand you are into the dark powers and the evil powers and uh, you are a sorcerer you're a witch or whatever and then you come before the lord and then you are bringing an offering it says but i don't have pleasure in you you are dealing with the past of darkness you're an occultic man occultic woman i will not accept that offering from you you're a gossip and you're a backbiter and you're doing evil and you're doing what aaron and uh, miriam what they did against moses and he said miriam come here and aaron come here if there is any seer if there's any prophet i will know him but moses my servant is not like that i speak to him face to face and therefore when he left leprosy came on miriam and the lord is saying all your life you're just gossiping and you're just backbiting the leaders are nothing before you and the pastor is nothing before for you and because of that i don't accept your person and neither will i accept any sacrifice from you judas says carol to a if you're a backslider and uh, you have not accepted your person and you are planning to hurt the lord and you are planning to betray the lord and woe is unto that man by whom the son of man is betrayed i don't have any pleasure you backslider i don't have any pleasure you judas is carol and neither will i accept an offering from your hand and as and sapphira are you telling the lord a lie how is he that you have you have lied to the only ghost you have not lied unto man you have lied unto god and i don't accept your person i don't respect your person you are a backslider you are a liar and neither will i accept any offering from you demons has loved the present world and has gone back into the world and he that loveth the world is an enemy of god worldly man worldly woman i do not have any pleasure in you and neither will i accept an offering from you malachi at this body of entreaty he was calling upon the children of israel he was saying live right and behave right and let us know that the law of god is important unto you and the personality of god is very important to you treat him like a father the heavenly father and treat him like a master the heavenly master and treat him like a governor the governor of all the nations and then when you have that attitude you're saved you're a child of god and you maintain that righteousness in your life and then you don't count the service of god and the sacrifice of god and just a cheap thing then you can come and offer the sacrifice otherwise i have no pleasure in you look at malachi chapter one i'm reading from verse 12 but she is but she are profane it in that she say the table of the lord is polluted and the fruit thereof and even the meat and is contemptible ye, ye said also behold watch a, what a weariness a, what a weariness is it and ye have not at, at it says the lord of course and ye brought that which was torn and the lame and the sick does ye brought an offering shall i accept this of your hand says the lord the lord is saying even your attitude no respect even your attitude no honor even your attitude no obedience even your attitude no affection even your attitude that there is no devotion unto me should i expect anything from you should i accept anything from you and there are people in whom god does not have pleasure 
a backslider. There are people in whom God does not have pleasure, a false prophet. There are people in whom God does not have pleasure, the people that, that are not retaining their salvation. And God says, since I don't have any pleasure in you, you think I'm going to accept any sacrifice from your hand? Hosea chapter 8. I'm reading here from verse 8. Hosea chapter 8. And we're reading from verse 8. You must count your relationship very important, very essential in the sight of God. And when you come to the house of God, anything you're offering, first of all, your heart is right with God. First of all, you're single-minded for, for the honor and for the glory of God. Hosea chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 8. Israel is swallowed up. Now shall they be among the Gentiles as a vessel wherein is no honor. Israel swallowed up, swallowed up in their iniquity, swallowed up in their evil, swallowed up in their backsliding. And it says, now shall they be among the Gentiles and it will be among like people vessel in whom there is no honor look at verse 12 i have written unto him i've written to him the great things of my law and then it says but they were counted as a strange thing you see israel they counted the word of god as a strange thing that abomination the abomination of the gentiles should not be a part of their lives they counted that as a strange thing that they will be different and separated segregated severed from the people of the world they counted that as a strange thing that they will not dress like the world they will not drink what the world was drinking they will not eat what the world was eating and it will make a difference between the holy and the unholy they counted that as a strange thing that their marriages will be according to the will of god they counted that as a strange thing all the sound doctrine of the word of God they counted as a strange thing and God said I cannot have pleasure in you the things that are important to me the things that are essential to me the glory that is essential to me you count that as a strange thing I cannot have any pleasure in you take away your sacrifice and take away those corruptible and polluted things I will have the first I will have the best I will have the pure I'll have the clean I'll have the holy I will have the undefiled I will have the one that doesn't have any blemish and God was telling them that because they need to recognize the position of God the personality of God and they need to recognize the glory of God I come to point number three now consecration of pure commendable service unto God that's what the Lord is calling us to this year it's going to be a year of blessing I said it's going to be a year of blessing but then it's a year of responsibility it's a year of commitment unto god if this year is going to be different from last year our behavior this year will be different our commitment this year will be different and then our conviction this year will be different it will be on the basis of the word of god itself look at chapter one of malachi i'm reading from verse 11. malachi chapter one we're looking at verse 11. it says for from the rising of the sun even to the going down of the sun my name shall be great among the gentiles it says you understand my name will be great my name will be exalted and everything you do and everywhere you go and every action you take must show that my name is greater above the fathers in the world my my name is greater above the masters in the world my name must be greater above the governors of the world then he goes on to say and in every place incense shall be offered unto my name and a pure offering a pure offering a pure offering for my name shall be great he says that again among the heathen says the lord of hosts what you do to the lord you must be conscious that i'm offering this to god you come to the house of god i'm offering this to god you come in the presence of god i'm offering this to god you come to the worship of god i'm offering this to god you come in the service where the children of god are gathered and you're ministering to the people of god whether you're teaching or singing or whatever it is you're doing i'm offering this to the lord it must be the very best it must be the pure it must be the holy it must be the clean look at verse 14 it says uh, and but cursed be the deceiver which has in his flock a male and uh, and vows and sacrifices to the lord a corrupt sin a corrupt sin it says cursed be that a uh, person that is sacrificing he has the good one he sacrificing what is bad deliberately 
he has the clean he sacrifices what is evil and what is unclean deliberately he has what will be appreciated and he knows what will be appreciated and deliberately he offers that which god will not appreciate because he doesn't count god as anything and somebody has said you offer nothing that is worth anything to god because you think your god is worth nothing because you think your god is underneath your feet because you think your god is not as important as that to offer something great and something good something essential to him let's say for example i said it before you're a teacher of the word of god there's no preparation and then you just come and as you come like this uh, you are you are here and you are just teaching and then we can tell there's no preparation can you do that in the world you cannot do that in the world let's say you're supervising exam in the world you'll not get there late but you do everything you ought to do to make sure that you are there but when it is you know the service of god you come and then if you are not there in good time you expect the church and you expect the lord and you expect the leadership to understand okay this is church we shouldn't be so serious about church okay this is church we should offer what is not serious to go this is church we don't expect them uh, to be prompt and to be there in good time because it is church if you were supervising exam in the world you'll be prompt you'll be there before the time no matter the situation if you are going to travel out and you know the plane is leaving at this time you will get there at the right time to make sure you don't miss the plane you don't miss the flight how is it that we don't count the service of god more important and if you're whatever area of work you are you're doing in the church the things were sacrificing to the lord for the lord in the church how is it do we deliberately offer something that is not acceptable in the sight of the lord the lord is saying but that's not the best but that's not right but that's not good but it's not acceptable i'm blessing you i'm doing all this for you and i'm promising you this and that and jacob have i loved and the children of israel have i loved i make you peculiar i make you special and i give all this to you and see how you are responding reciprocating and how you're doing what you're doing and so he says because it be the deceiver which has uh, that which is a male and uh, then he vows and sacrifices to the lord he corrupts him for i am a great king the lord has to emphasize he says don't come with that anymore before me because i am a great king our god is a great king i said our god is a great king he merits the best he deserves the best and the best we're going to give to god in jesus name anytime you offer anything to the lord check up check up can i offer this to the governor can i offer this to the governor of my bank can i offer this to the governor of my nation can i offer this to the principal of my school can I offer this to the master in my institution? Can I offer this to the people of the world? Think about that. And then if you cannot offer that, then don't offer that to God. Understand who God is, that God is great, and God is holy, and God is high. And therefore you offer the very best. Leviticus chapter 21. Leviticus chapter 21. And here we're reading from verse 17. Leviticus chapter 21, verse 17. It says, Speak unto Aaron, saying, Whosoever be he, of the seed of their generation that has any blemish let him not approach to offer the bread of his god it says if there's blemish in our lives if there's sin in our lives if there's hypocrisy in our lives if there's no honesty in our lives if there's no transparent honesty if we're not holy in the sight of god if we know that our lives are not acceptable in the sight of the lord it says moses tell aaron and tell those people if they have any blemish in their lives they should not come and offer on his table we're looking at verse 21 it says no man that has a blemish of the seed of aaron the priest of the of the prayer aaron the priest shall come near to offer the offering of the lord made by fire and 
he that has a blemish he shall not come near to offer the bread of his god my friend if you're going to visit the uh, prayer warriors and then you're saying i don't know whether i belong to this or belong to that uh, you cast out this thing out of me i did it i don't know how this came in maybe my mother gave me this my, my grandmother gave me this i fly here i fly there and you're visiting the prayer warriors and hey, you're telling me you're still a walker. You know that you don't, you don't even understand yourself. You don't know where you are. And then you are coming to offer anything before the Lord. He says, don't come. Don't offer anything. Come as a sinner. Come as a backslider. Come as a person that is involved with the powers of darkness. And get to the altar and say to your life. That's what the word of God here is saying. It's saying that if you're a backslider, if you're believing in sin privately and you know it, that you're not right, you know that if we're going to take the Lord's Supper today now, once we close our eyes and we're going to pray, waiting for the Lord's Supper, already you have sneaked out, already you have gone, because you're not sure of yourself. It says, well, if you're like that, don't come to offer anything to the Lord, because you know your life is not right. You're not sure of the life you're living. Look at verse 23. It says, oh, only he uh, shall not go into the veil. Then it says, No karma nice unto the altar because he has a blemish. Because he has a blemish that he profane not my sanctuaries, for I, the Lord, do sanctify them. He's telling us that if you're going to offer anything to the Lord, first of all, you yourself must be right. You yourself must be saved. You yourself must be sanctified. You yourself must be pure. Look at chapter 22, verse 20. But whatsoever has a blemish, that that shall he not shall he not offer for it shall not be acceptable for you if stuck is talking about your person is spoken about your life is spoken about your character is spoken about your christian experience if you're not right with god don't offer anything before the lord now we don't know who you are we might uh, you know say brother you're going to teach uh, you know study scripture uh, next sunday but you know that you and your wife you really don't understand each other and uh, for the first time you got so angry you said this woman is take, is just riding on me just taking me for granted and then you stretch your hand and you slap her you slap me and you say you're a preacher and you're going to church and next sunday to teach her the scripture i will teach her the scripture you woman you are the devil you will not hinder me no she's not you hinder yourself you're fighting and if the trumpet sounds at that time where will you be and so you'll not just come here with that anger and bitterness at home and then you'll come here praise the lord no i won't respond we cannot praise god with you even your voice doesn't sound that you are still in the lord even your attitude you know it in the head you know the bible in the head but it's not in your heart we're not going to respond to you because it says if your life is not tried you'll not come to offer anything we're not coming here to dramatize a theoretic language you know theoretic knowledge i know this i know this maybe you know that but you're not practicing it at home and then the things you offer let's say you're right with god let's say you're safe let's say you're sanctified but the things you offer you don't respect god you don't respect his church you don't respect the leadership and you cannot listen to us i will say go this way then you go your way you cannot come to offer anything here on the altar of the lord that's what the lord is saying there's no politics here here is the word of god and we're going to keep to this word you know what the lord has called us for earnestly contending for the faith once delivered unto the saints this is it the word of god that has committed unto us we're not just pray for me prophet we're not just bread and butter christians we're people that want to give our best to the lord and after that we expect the best from the lord and this year will be a year of real consecration to the lord in jesus name i'm waiting for an amen over there verse 21 in verse 21 he says that whosoever whosoever offers a sacrifice of peace offering unto the lord to accomplish his vow or a free will offering in he in beef such of sheep it shall be perfect 
it shall be perfect anything you're offering to the lord it shall be perfect to be accepted there there shall be no blemish therein and that's what the lord is telling us and this year that's what we're going to do in jesus name we're looking at ephesians once again chapter 5 ephesians chapter 5 i'm reading here from verse 25 ephesians chapter 5 verse 25 it says husbands love your wives even as christ also loved the church and gave himself for it do you understand your family life affects your service in the church do you understand your obedience to the word of god affects your ministry in the church can i tell you that serving the lord does not rest on passing an interview you know recently they interviewed uh, some of us and they said you know ask this question ask this question and then they said you're recommended can i remind you that although there is human recommendation your life is important your family life is important they interviewed you they didn't interview your wife if they interviewed your wife your wife didn't tell them the real things taking place in the family between you and your mate and between you and the people around you did you find out that you might be recommended it's not just paperwork it is spirit work that it says husbands love your wives even as christ also loved the church and your wives my husband is the pastor automatically i am the woman leader no madam your life is very important because if you're not right with god if you don't know the abc of the christian life of the salvation of the sanctification obviously as you argue with us here i can imagine the way you argue at home charity begins at home if you're not obedient to the father of the church physically and to the one who talks to you directly bringing the word of god every time if you can look down on your father in the lord the one who is teaching you the word of i can imagine what happens at home it's not automatic because if we're going to offer any sacrifice before the lord it must be a sacrifice without blemish look at it again husbands love your wives even as christ also loved the church that he gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it to the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself a glorious church ask yourself if every member of this church were like you would this be a glorious church or well, the lying the hypocrisy the backsliding the covering up the dishonesty if everybody were like you in this church will you be a glorious church that's what the lord is looking for he's looking for a glorious church he's coming for a glorious church and he's saying that he might present you to himself a glorious church not having sport or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish the lord will cleanse us and the lord will purge us and they will become people that are focused and centered on getting to heaven and the goal of your coming is not singing in the choir the goal of your coming here is not playing in the orchestra the goal of your coming here is not teaching Sunday scripture the goal of your coming here is not being a leader the goal of your coming to this church is to prepare you for heaven and so if you know that and if you put that as number one i want to get to heaven all the other things if they come okay if they don't come all right if i'm a preacher okay if i'm not a preacher all right if i'm a singer all right if i'm not a singer i'm not a choir all right if i'm a worker all right if i'm not a worker all right but the purpose of my coming here to deeper christian life ministry is that i will get to heaven if you have that attitude all the other things will not matter all the other things will not matter and you'll not have to fight about anything to grab anything the goal is that heaven will be ours and that heaven we're going to get there in jesus name so that you'll be part of that glorious church it tells us in philippians chapter 2 the philippians chapter 2 and i'm reading here from verse 14. philippians chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 14. it says do all things without murmurings and disputings whatever you cannot do without murmuring drop it 
whatever you cannot do without debating, disputing, drop it. Because it's not going to be blessed of the Lord. It says, I'm a great king and my name shall be great. And I want the great offering and I want a pure offering. It says in verse 15 that she may be blameless and the harmless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom you shine as lights in the world holding forth the word of life that i may rejoice in the day of christ and that i have not run in vain neither labored in vain if you don't keep your salvation all those who are laboring over you spiritually were laboring in vain i pray our labor over this church will not be in vain in jesus name how will that not be in vain it's not by the singing it's not by the working it's not by the ministry it's by the life we live it's not by whatever service we render first of all it's our lives and when there's that salvation there when there's that sanctification there when there's that honesty of our transparent before the lord then we know we're not laboring in vain in first thessalonians chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 22 abstain from all appearance of evil you're going to offer anything to the lord the great god the governor of heaven and earth you are going to offer anything in the service of the lord it says abstain from all appearance of evil you're preparing for heaven and you want to worship with the people of god on the final day when christ shall come and the saints of god shall go marching in it says abstain from all appearance of evil and the very god of peace sanctify you holy and i pray god your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our lord jesus christ faithfully see who has called you who also will do it faithfully see he said he will say he will say he says from sin and he says from hypocrisy and iniquity and from all transgressions he says he'll sanctify and he will because faithful is he is able and he's willing he's mighty and he's powerful there's nothing he cannot do he redeems it he, he changes lives it transforms lives once you surrender yourself unto the lord and nothing matters to you in life except serving the lord except obeying the word of the lord he is faithful faithful you see that call it you who also will do it the lord is saying give me the best i merit the best i desire the best i demand the best and if this year you offer yourself completely unto the lord and say only the best is good for the great king of heaven this year the lord will surprise you this year the lord will bless your life he will bless your family and this will be the best year you ever lived in your life your christian life the very best your attitude the very best this holiness we're talking about the very best and then the harvest of the blessings of the lord will be the very best in your life this year in jesus name give him your best he'll give you his best let's rise up and talk to the lord in prayer as we have always done uh, the you know one of our leaders is going to lead us in prayer and after leading us in prayer then i'll come back and then i will seal up the blessing of god in your life don't go away don't go away open up your heart to the lord and say yes lord yes lord yes lord i want your very best i want your very best and i'm going to offer myself the very best unto the lord open your mouth and pray Let, let us pray. Let us commit ourselves to the Lord. The word of
And everybody said amen. amen. Another amen. amen. Raise up those hands. That means you are surrendering to the Lord. Your life this year will be a new, a new life. You will not take God for granted. You will reciprocate the love of God. You give him your very heart, your very life, everything you've got, sincerely and wholeheartedly. And your service to the Lord will be the very best in Jesus' name. And then his blessing will be upon your life. But if you are dishonest, if you remain in sin, if you remain in evil, if you remain in hypocrisy, already he has told you in his word, that means you don't regard him. You don't appreciate him. His blessing will not be upon you as a deliberate sinner, as a hypocrite, as a person who is not going to heaven. If you are serving Satan, it's not going to make you happy while serving Satan. Blessing you while serving Satan. But it's when you give your whole heart and life unreservedly unto God, that's when his blessing will be upon you. Don't deceive yourself and we are not going to deceive you. I pray that your life will be totally committed to the Lord in Jesus' name. You believe? You accept? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this hour. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, because you have reminded us you are a father who has loved us so much to give Jesus Christ for our salvation. And Lord, we have turned away from our sin. And we have turned away from the world. And we have turned unto you in repentance and faith. Oh Lord, I pray your salvation be real in every life in Jesus' name. Lord, thank you for the provision you have made for a pure heart, for holiness of heart and life, and so that those who are holy will get to heaven and live in heaven forever. And Lord, we pray this experience of holiness, of sanctification, will be real in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Cleanse us from every iniquity. Cleanse us from every sin and cleanse us from anything that is not of your divine holiness in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, you promised to us that we shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon our lives that will prepare us for a great service and for a fruitful service in the kingdom. We pray, Lord, that your power will rest on the sanctified in Jesus' name. You told us to seek your kingdom first and then all these other things shall be added unto us. We pray, Lord, this year there will be a miraculous addition. There will be a supernatural addition. Everything we have been seeking, everything we have been asking, asking in prayer, we are praying, oh Lord, pour them down from heaven in Jesus' name. You said, prove me now herewith. If I will not open the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Lord, I pray from every direction, from above and from around, from heaven and from earth, I pray, Lord, you pour it down. Supernatural so, blessing, pour it down. Physical blessing, pour it down. Family blessing, pour it down. Professional blessing, pour it down. And Lord, every walk of our hand this year, you will bless in Jesus' name. As your people go out, Lord, send helpers to them. Send providers for them. And provide all their needs according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus, in Jesus' name. This year, Lord, dry the tears from their eyes. And take sorrow away from their heart. And I pray, Lord, everything we have ever prayed for, that you put in your bottle of remembrance, Lord, I pray, this year will be the year of answer, and the year of solution, and the year of miracle, and the year of signs and wonders, and the year of abundant, supernatural, overflowing blessing, in Jesus' name. Touch every life today. Touch every family today. Turn everything around for the better. 
And I pray, Lord, the joy of the Lord will be the strength of everyone in Jesus' name. As you go, your blessing meets you on the way. As you go, the joy of the Lord abide in your life. Your family, your profession, your children, your life, the work of God in your hand. This year, a year of multiplied fulfillment of the promises of God and supernatural blessing in Jesus' name. The best from God. The best from heaven. The best from the people of God. The best from every direction be upon your life this year. And your life be the best for God for his glory. You make him great, he'll make you great. You honor him, he will honor you. All that you do, the Lord will multiply blessings upon your life. Go in the joy of the Lord. Go in the blessing of the Lord. And go meet blessing everywhere you go. Lord, confirm it in every life. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Thank you and God bless you.